All right, well, we're in the 300ZX. We're about to go run and pick up the part that we need. So what this thing is doing is it'll vibrate. The drive line will vibrate because the center carrier bearing has uh, gone bad. And you can feel it in the seat because, of course, the drive line runs through the drive tunnel right here. And then the bearing's probably right about here. And it rattles. So you can feel it in the base of the seat and it makes a little bit of noise. I'll see if I can pick it up Hi, on camera and doesn't clear look great. Hi. Yeah, she was in a wedding last night and she felt she needed to wear her dress again today. So she's rocking her little, uh, what's that, flower girl dress. We're gonna go pick up some car parts and hopefully we'll get this fixed today. It's just one more thing to make this car more reliable and uh, keep it operating for years to come. So wow. you can hear that. Slow down. Whoa, that was so fast. That was so fast. So the more you give it gas, the more that vibrates. So I really don't want it to come undone, but I'll try and get it. There you go. Can you hear that? I can feel it for sure. You can feel it like crazy. Like it's definitely getting not acceptable. Plus we're like selling all of our cars because we're in the middle of a move. So I need this car to be reliable when we get down to our new location. All right, so it really does it. Um, when we stop and then take off is like when it's, I think, the worst. So we'll see if we can pick it up right now. Uh, I could definitely feel it. I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear it inside the car. I don't know how good the camera's gonna do about picking it up, but it makes like, can do like a cloaking sound sometimes, but uh, it's like a vibrating sound, like something's knocking around. And then you can feel it in your seat. If you're having this problem, you will feel it in your seat. And you'll be like, what's going on? All right, so O'Reilly's had the part. They're like the only place that I could get it the quickest. Everybody else wanted to wait like freaking four days, at the minimum four days to get it. So they literally had it the next day. Tell you what, um, O'Reilly's has definitely been coming through lately. That's like my go to place to get these, like, kind of you know, OEM replacement parts that are just part store parts. And I check everybody, I checked everybody yesterday from Amazon to AutoZone, NAPA, what is the some of those other ones I can't think of, whatever the name is. And uh, O'Reilly's had it. They've definitely had the last handful of parts I've needed and been able to get them quicker. So make sure you shop around. Don't just jump over to them. I know everybody uses autos, but don't just jump over there and think you're going to. That's the only option. There's options out there. So we got that. We got a little bit more running around to do. I got to get Claire some food and Claire's mom some food, of course, because uh, we want them to be nice and happy while I replace this center carrier on here. And. Uh, then we'll get back to the house and continue on with our project for today. All right, so we're running around a little bit. We had to get some of Claire's favorite food and happy teriyaki. You guys seen some of the other videos. You see me and Rochelle eat here. Uh, Rochelle wanted this. What did you get? We went to the dollar store too. Show them the movie that we got, Claire Bear. Orange chicken. We got orange chicken. What's that movie? Let's get the movie out. We got this crazy movie. I saw somebody post about it and I was like, I had to find that movie. So we went to the dollar store and we got Croczilla. So you know we're gonna watch that tonight. And then what did you get? Some Sour Patch Kids? Sour Patch Kids. And uh, then we got some orange chicken for lunch. Yeah. And I was just sitting in the drive thru. Maybe you can hear this. Maybe you hear that. So we were over in the drive thru and I was like, is my car making a knocking sound? No, it was them doing that over there just uh was bouncing off just right where i was getting freaked out for a second but uh all right continue on mission get home and get this car tore apart replace that center barrier as fast as possible and as efficiently as possible and correctly and uh that way we can get this back on the road and we got plenty of other stuff to do today we'll see if we can hear some uh driveline noise so you can maybe recognize it if you're having the same problem It'll definitely be like when you kind of let off mic clunk and stuff too. So it's definitely got some noise to it. 
vibration though. Vibration in the base of your seat. There's our gauge cluster that does not work. It's been like tricky to find one. There's like three or four different versions of this gauge cluster and how they hook up, but uh, and I haven't really applied myself that much to it. So. so definitely vibration. I don't know if you could hear it, but it was a ton of vibration on that. Mostly from like start and stop, or well, mostly from start to, wait, from stop to start. You get a lot of vibration. Let's see if we can hear it clunky. Yeah, I can hear it. I doubt the camera is going to pick it up, but if you're hearing that, just stuff rattling around, that's what it is, and uh, this is how we're going to fix it. All right, well, it's a little messy out here, but this is our part. Here's the part number. Bam. And uh, this is what it looks like. So this is the part we'll be replacing. Get a nice fresh one in there. Nice and smooth, no more sound. Well, of course, we need a new nut and washer. But first things first is we have to get it out of the car. As you can see right here, a ton of boxes my friend was brought over because we're getting ready to move. So the thing that sucks about this is Nissan, just the continuing factor about, look, we need a steering wheel out of the way, that out of the way. Oh. So how Nissan did everything on this car is it's all buried under other parts, other components. So, ooh, nasty. Um, yeah, we've got our exhaust here that we have to get out of the way. I'm hoping we can just take off that rear section, not have to take off this, and uh, slide the differential out, but, or the uh, drive shaft out. All right, so the first thing we're doing, remove this four 12 millimeter bolts. So drop out of place. Give us access to these 14 millimeter bolts. And then right here, we've got 14 millimeters. These are studs with nuts on it. So we just zip those off, four of those, so we can disconnect this center section of exhaust and get to our drive line. And of course, while you're down here, we can take a minute to appreciate all the hard work I did in getting this subframe painted. We don't get to see it all the time, but when we do, I'll actually wipe that down too. All right, well, now we got that exhaust off. We can see our center carrier bearing and let's check it. Yeah, I would say it's uh, pretty terrible. So glad we're replacing that as pieces just fall out. So yeah, that's that's no good, dude. This is uh, no good. All right, well, there we have our problem. Um, that is no longer even close to what it's supposed to be. So we've got all that out of the way. I just bent this heat shielding out of the way. It's super pliable. I should be able to bend it back into place, no problem. I really don't wanna have to take off any more exhaust than I have to. So we're gonna pop these guys loose, just 14 millimeters, um, grab it on the nut, and uh, we'll spin it around and get it all free, and hopefully this will just slide right out of place. All right, so ratcheting wrench is gonna be your friend on some tight area like this, and how these are designed is you can literally just hold it, and it won't spin the bolt, and you can get this part off. We'll do that four times. Make sure your car's in neutral. So you can turn the drive shaft and get all four bolts out. Let me do that and see if we can slide this in. <clears throat> all right, so yeah, we just unhooked this from the final drive differential. Uh, this thing just slid right out. It was begging to come out. We'll take a look. You yeah, can see this bearing is straight up garbage. So good thing we're doing this. If you have any problems on your Z, Highly recommend this is extremely dangerous to be driving around like this. So highly recommend you get it fixed I'll take this apart get it over to the press 
get this new stuff back on there. This really isn't taking that much time at all. All right, so we just got our drive line out. This is just ridiculous. So we're gonna break this thing apart right here. But before we do that, I'm gonna match mark this. This white doesn't work very great. One of my red one, but I think we threw it away. Let me see if I can find a better marker. This one's not gonna work great on that. All right, well, we got the two halves separated. Boom, one and two. And this is the part we need to work on. So we're gonna have to unstake this nut right here, get that bent out, and then take this nut off, try it with the impact gun. And we'll have this assembly, and it says it needs, we'll have to press this out. So we'll check that one, get it. First thing we need to do is get this flange off, unstake that nut, so let's work on that now. All right, she's off. So what I did was just smack it a few times with this the best I could. You'll only be able to do so much. And we got this guy out, impacted it. He's like one and one eighth. That was like the closest I had. It's bigger than a 22 millimeter. And that's the biggest I had in standard socket size. So we just switched to an inch and an eighth. It's a little big, but it knocked it out. And uh, there you go. And I think we need to mark this to know how it goes back on. And we should be able to pop it right apart. All right, this black marker works a lot better. I actually went and retouched up our match marks on the outside there. And then we just marked it right here and then right there on the shaft. And then I call for a puller to pull this apart. I will see if I can do it without one. If not, we might be going to grab a puller, but uh, there you go. Claire is still in her beautiful flower dress, making who knows what. And so no puller, but we are gonna use this press and it's just gonna press itself right on out. Let me set this camera down and you can watch. Watch, watch the magic happen. Bam, just like that, there we go. All right, I really should have the right a bearing separator tool, but I just used this and I was going to show you and I was just going to see if this worked, but I barely touched it with the press and it fell right out. So there's our complete disassembly of our two piece drive shaft on the 300 ZX. Just going to clean this up a little bit. We'll get everything cleared up. We get our new parts and start reinstalling this. This is really only taking not that much time at all. All right, so we're just gonna assemble it the same way we take it off in reverse order. We're gonna put our sitter bearing in there first, get that on, put our washer, get our plate back on there, get that guy on, and then stake that nut. And we'll go, go from there. This will be pretty easy. Let's just do a time lapse go now. Well, we got it back together put this nut on there suck everything together what sucks is we literally i have to use the same nut that we took off there because uh the one that came in the kit was too small and i don't have time to get another one of these and i don't even know if you can get this nut by itself so not preferred definitely not preferred you're never supposed to use these twice but you know not a perfect world <clears throat> this is the kit that like was available. I got this one at O'Reilly's. It was the one available at AutoZone, the one available at NAPA, the one available on Amazon. All were the same kit. So that nut does not fit. This is the nut it came with. It's much too small. I was worried about that. So I'm not super worried about it on this project because we are going to be getting a different drive line once we do a manual swap. This is just for right now, we've got it staked back into place. Don't think we'll have any issues with it, but it's not the preferred way to do it.
All right, well, 300ZX is done. Back on the ground, it really didn't take too long to do that service. It's a very important service. The one tool, the specialty tool that I had, of course, the lift, but we're not talking about that. But the press, that was what was able to separate all those pieces on the drive line and really allow, allow us to replace it. If not, you can just go to your local auto parts store. Um, I always hit up AutoZone, it's close to my house. Rent a tool program, you can get all the tools that you need to do the service. You can rent them for AutoZone and it will be free for you. Or O'Reilly's, I'm pretty sure has the same thing. So, boom, I am disappointed that that nut that the kit came with did not fit the drive shaft for this car because that sucks because we did have to use the other one if you're doing this on your car and you're not planning on changing the drive shaft pretty soon drive line pretty soon would highly suggest getting the correct nut and staking that down because we shouldn't be using the same one twice but other than that we'll take this thing out for a spin here in a little bit and uh see if that noise is gone i'm pretty sure it is but uh we'll check it out anyways all right, so 300ZX driveline, totally repaired, totally fine. Didn't get to film some driving afterwards because, well, as you can see, and you're probably wondering, where the heck are you even at right now, Jesse? Well, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit smaller, but we did just move across the country. I am now in Florida. The beginning of this video took place in Idaho. The end is in Florida and a lot, is, uh, a lot of stuff has happened. Didn't have the camera out the whole time, but that doesn't matter. The driveline was fixed. The 300ZX got shipped out here. It's not in the garage because we got toolboxes. The lift is here. It's over there. We've got a car. We've got our project motor over there. So a lot has happened. We're going to completely transform this garage. As you can see, we are putting some of the J Garage colors back on this wall. We have to paint it. There's so much stuff to do. You can join me. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you want to see me transform this garage. And uh, I mean, now we're just in a two-car garage. So we're going to transform this and make it just as awesome as the three-car garage we left in Idaho to come down to the sunny, sunny, beautiful weather. It's 80 degrees out today. And it's like almost Halloween. I freaking love it. So that is it. The 300ZX is sitting out front. If you see me down here, say hello. Welcome into the neighborhood. Super happy to be here. Follow, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Don't forget to get your J Garage t-shirt. And uh, I will see you soon. Make sure there's some other videos that are coming come out. They're coming out. Might not all be in order. Might see me back in Idaho before we start seeing more Florida footage. But uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.